Welcome to Worship Today with the Churches of Steep and Froxfield with Privet. I'm Sue Jones. I'm a reader and an ordinand in these parishes. It's good to have you with us for our online worship on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Last weekend, through the medium of television, we had the chance, all of us, to be witnesses to the historic coronation of King Charles III. The service in Westminster Abbey was a Christian act of worship that honoured the ancient tradition of anointing and crowning monarchs. It also reflected the monarch's role while celebrating the character of Britain as it is today and looking forward to the future with hope. Amidst all the pomp and ceremony lay another message. Our King committed himself through prayers and oaths to follow the Lord he serves in a life of loving service in his role as monarch. A young chorister welcomed King Charles in the name of the King of Kings, and the king replied, in his name and after his example, I come not to be served, but to serve. So let's pray. God of mercy, unite your church in the Holy Spirit, that we may serve you with all our hearts and work together with unselfish love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. During the ceremony, the king was presented with a number of symbolic gifts. The Bible, the word of God, was the church's first gift to the king. And by accepting this gift, the king recognised its authority and accepted that constitutionally no human authority should try to overrule it. The presentation of the Bible before any of the regalia reminds us all, as well as the king, that he's called to govern with good conscience in the sight of God. The words and symbolism of the coronation service also gave us the chance to reflect on our own call to serve God and his creation. As the prophet Micah reminds us, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? 
The reading is taken from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 21. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Our Bible reading today is Luke's account of Jesus at worship in the synagogue. Jesus was an observant Jew, and here is shown reading from the prophet Isaiah. Jesus applies the words of the text to himself, and it's these words which are the hallmark of what Christians understand the kingdom of God to be about. Healing, freedom, justice and peace. The language of anointing in the reading points to the most solemn element in the coronation service, when King Charles himself was anointed, set apart, for the service of his people. The king's anointing set him apart to fulfil a vocation and begin a new life as sovereign, dedicated to the service of all. The collect, which was used at the coronation service. Lord, enthroned in heavenly splendour, look with favour upon thy servant Charles, our king, and bestow upon him such gifts of wisdom and love that we and all thy people may live in peace and prosperity and in loving service to one another, to thine eternal glory, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we give you thanks for Charles, your servant and our King, for his devotion to his family, nation, commonwealth and to the earth our fragile home. We thank you for his faith in you and his love for all peoples and for his call to be our sovereign at such a time as this. Bless and protect Charles in all the years to come. Grant him long to reign over us and give him gifts of wisdom and discernment as together we face the opportunities and challenges of our age. Bless Queen Camilla, William, Prince of Wales and all the royal family in this time of change. May we all abide in your love, draw strength from the deep wells of Christian hope and dedicate ourselves afresh to God's kingdom of justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and grant us his peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today and I hope that we'll be able to see you again soon, either in person or online. Goodbye.